Hi folks, thanks for joining us here at Freedom Forest on the south coast of the UK in Growing Zone 9A. It's the 6th of May today and we're going to give you a tour around our main growing beds and show you what's happening here right now. Our main growing beds actually start just down here, um, right above our food forest. And this is an area that Dan mostly manages, so I'll let him tell you what's happening in here. Hello friends. So this little area here is one of my favorite beds actually. And this is an area, if you keep track of our videos, that I've been growing our sweet potatoes and potatoes in over the last few years. Um, this year, you may actually be able to see here, I'm doing our new, or I say new, but old fashioned uh, Native American style of three sisters growing. And this area here, uh, we didn't show in our last video, but this is actually gonna be our sweet corn in here. Um, the KS Super Sweet, and they are planted direct, so they should be coming up hopefully any day soon. Um, we'll be planting our beans, and we're also gonna have some courgettes in amongst these in the gaps. We've got some calendula coming up down here as well. Um, we introduced these because they're really beautiful. You can eat the petals and they're just kind of a nice alternative to some of the other weeds we have here which don't really have any other particular uses for us. Um, we've got some potatoes still coming up. I've left a few in here. They're always popping up, um, kind of volunteer potatoes. Sometimes when they're nice, big, healthy clumps like this, it means you had a nice sized seed in there. So you can still get a nice harvest off those. Um, moving over to this side, this year, this strip along here is going to be our sweet potatoes. And I've got mainly our outdoor variety, which is T65, that's going to be growing along here. So far, I've propagated just over 100 slips this year, which is probably more than we've done other years. So they're going to be going in probably third week of May, just to make sure we don't get any late frost that set them back. Along the back, we have these stems that are poking up out of the wood tips here. And this whole strip along the back here is one of our perennial beds of yacon. And that's become one of our favorite crops actually over the last few years. Um, absolutely beautiful. Um, you may know already, I often describe it tasting like sugar cane and yeah, it just takes me back to the tropics. So definitely a favorite of mine. So this will be completely packed out with a sea of green yakon to head height soon. And some of these actually I've just noticed are just starting to emerge from around the base of the rhizomes down here. And we treat these as a replant perennial. We harvest and put them back in the ground at the same time on the same day. And we've also got some self-seeded Swiss chard here, which I'll probably leave these ones to go to seed because I do love them to be able to just pop up all over the place. And they do grow like a weed when you let them do that. And coming into this little bottom area here, it's quite cool. Um, little fireplace here. This is just a really nice place um, on, a, on a long day's gardening to come and enjoy lunch and stuff. And we've got some uh, nice ornamentals here. This is cordyline Banksy. And then we have a wall of uh, edible dahlias and cannas along there as well. So coming back up into our main growing area, um, you may sometimes hear us refer to this area as Dubai. And that's because without realizing when Dan sort of shaped these beds, it ended up looking a bit like a palm tree, albeit that the palm tree is slightly shorter on one side than the other. But because of that, I just named it Dubai and it's kind of stuck. So that's what we call this growing area. Okay, so to begin, we've got uh, just beam frames here. In the next week or two, I'll be planting this um, area direct with our runner beans. Uh, so yeah, nothing much going on in that bed at the moment other than a few straggling strawberries. And then above the beans, as you can see here, this is our original bed of Albion strawberries. And if you've watched our recent food forest video, 
You'll know that um, we've been spreading strawberries everywhere as ground cover. And this is, well, well, this was where they all first came from. And this was originally just two neat strips of strawberries that over time have kind of lovingly taken over this area. Um, and we've let them because as you can see again, we have quite a lot of sorrel around here. And so we kind of let the strawberries um, compete with the sorrel and find their balance um, and give us lots of beautiful fruits. Um, and yeah, there's various areas you'll probably see as we move around here where we've transplanted some strawberries and we're just happy to let them kind of take the areas over as much as they can um, to give us an edible ground cover and yeah, to stop other invasive weeds because I know I would rather have strawberries. Above the strawberries, um, something we're actually having a few issues with so far this year is our first carrot bed um, that we sowed for the season. And as you may well be able to see, there is not a lot of carrots going on in here. There is the odd one or two. Um, we had some really good germination happen quite soon after sowing. And then about two days later, I came back and looked at the bed and everything was gone. And I think it's mostly due to the dryness that we're experiencing. Now, we don't water an awful lot, but I, I do tend to water seed beds a couple of times and particularly when stuff first comes in. But the soil has been so dry where it has generally been so dry for spring so far. And I've been hearing other people talking about that they are struggling with carrots for this reason. So I think that's what's going on. So I'm going to have to re-sow this bed and be really diligent with watering it really regularly. Above there, that's another empty bed at the minute. I am just about to sow um, leeks and probably some rows of lettuce into this bed here. So that's just about to um, be tidied up and get busy. In these two beautiful fingers here, we have got lots of beetroot going on. Um, the top row of beetroot is bolt hardy. And these I planted um, in plugs, in multi-sown plugs back in February, and then transplanted them out. And they actually had a really hard time to start with. They weren't happy. We had a few cold spells and they were really unhappy for a good few weeks. But just in the last two or three weeks, they've really burst into life and are now looking beautiful and healthy. And then the bed below, um, is where I sowed these beetroots direct and if my memory serves me correctly we've got two different varieties in there um, one is a golden beet and then another one is one of my favorites which is like a pink stripy um, beetroot and I'll try and pronounce the name but I can never get it right it's Chigoa and you can maybe tell me how to pronounce that if I've said it wrong. Down onto our next long bed here. Um, this is all parsnips. And we have got a lot of parsnip germination happening, I'm pleased to say, um, because when I sowed the parsnips, I um, have learnt that parsnips do need a lot of moisture to make sure they germinate and if they dry out then they won't germinate so I was really diligent at watering the parsnip bed as much as I could and I was quite liberal with the seed because um, it was from saved seed from last year um, because we only grow one variety of parsnips here the true and tender variety so I've been saving my seed for a few years I have plenty of it I sowed it nice and thick and I watered it a lot. Um, and it's a good thing I sowed it thick because I've only just had enough netting to start covering this bed now. And the birds the last week or so have started having an absolute ball kicking all the wood chips and compost around in this bed. So we probably have lost quite a few of the parsnips now, um, but I'm still confident that we are gonna have some really good germination um, because of how densely they were sown. 
And then the other end to the beetroots, um, this is our main onion bed. And there's three rows of onions in here amongst last season's carrots, which I really need to pull out now because what's left in here isn't actually much good. Uh, but that's just a job that I need to get around to. And actually what I probably will end up doing is just chopping the heads off the carrots and letting the root that's left there just rot down and give back to the soil. Um, so yeah, so three rows of onions along here. And again, as always with the birds, they have had a bit of a hard time um, being scratched around and having the wood chips kicked all over the place. But they are doing surprisingly well and settling in um, considering how much grief they get. So really pleased about that. Down here in this bed, this is mainly my salad bed. And I've got loads of lettuce and coriander and then parsley planted along here. And also a few volunteer um, onions from last year. And they're about to run to seed and I will probably just let them do their thing. Uh, but yeah, lots of, lots of lettuce ready to go at the moment. Now this middle section here, um, is a job that is on my list that I should have done about three weeks ago. So this is all of our lamb's lettuce that is got these beautiful delicate flowers on and will shortly be run into seed. And now I'm happy to let it go to seed a little bit um, because that's how we get a new crop of it every year. I, I've only ever sown the lamb's lettuce once and we get a beautiful um, beautiful covering of it every winter now. Um, it's a really good green to have when there's not a lot else going on. So yeah, I will let it run to seed, but what I need to do before that happens is clear out this strip down here, which is actually our path, which it's seeded into, and then I kind of let it do its thing to a point. But yeah, now it's getting a bit much, so I need to get in here and have a tidy up and not let so much of it bolt. Also in amongst this though, we are still harvesting some amazing leeks. And if I remember right, I sowed these leeks direct um, back about the middle of May last year. And they are really, they've been really bulking up recently. Uh, one or two of them are just starting to run to seed, but we've been getting some beautiful leeks out of this bed for um, the back end of the winter. It's been really, really good borage dotted around in there, white borage. Um, so again, the borage is edible flowers, so you can add those to your salads and just make things a little bit more interesting. And I think the, the borage flowers actually have a slight cucumber type taste, so really nice and fresh. And then beyond the wilderness is a repeat bed again of um, salads, coriander, and um, parsley. So plenty going on, lots to harvest, no shortage of greens around here. And I had, it looks like the birds have been doing their thing again, but at the ends of these beds in the shade, I had just the other day transplanted a few little um, celery plants that have been all covered up by our lovely birds. Oh, there's a few onions actually in the middle of that bed as well. I had some overspill, so I just uh, popped a few onions in the middle there. But yeah, I need to, uh, Freedom Forest needs to invest in a bit more um, netting and some hoops because one of the things I need to get more diligent at is covering our beds when, um, when we've been sowing and planting out our young plants. Um, and yeah, I probably would do it actually if we had enough net to go around, but it's always kind of deciding what needs it the most at any one time. This lower bed here, which doesn't have a lot going in, uh, going on at this end, um, this one has been refreshed and is ready to go with our courgette plants, which I'll be planting out very, very soon. So this whole row along the front here will eventually be packed out with beautiful bulky courgettes. There's a couple of little volunteers of bits and pieces. We've got some more parsley going on here. A few little lettuces poking their heads up. 
And then at this end, we've got our kohlrabi, which um, is the first time I've grown kohlrabi. You might have heard me talking about that in other videos. And literally just yesterday, I took the bird net off this so I could pop it onto the parsnips. But I can see already overnight, the pigeons have been doing their thing. And all of these leaves just yesterday were absolutely perfect but they have been stripped. So I'll have to keep an eye on that and the bird net might have to go back on this because what we're actually hoping was to crop these quite quickly um, so that the, our later courgettes can go in this end of the bed. This top bed here has got some old um, parsnips in it left from last year. They've been absolute monsters. So I pull one of those out and it does us for about three dinners. Um, so that's why we haven't gotten through all of those at the minute. Um, and this bed again has been getting, it's got a really deep mulch of uh, wood chip on it because it was a parsnip bed last year. And so that's been having a real, um, it's been a real party area for the birds. I have got some spinach and rainbow chard and some herbs planted along the back there, but it's kind of survival of the fittest at the moment. There are quite a few things actually, to my surprise, starting to take hold, which is great. Um, but again, I need to clear out these parsnips and this is going to be another bed for uh, baby leaves and herbs and things like that for salads. Now, here is another example of where we are just letting the strawberries do their thing and run as rampant as they please and we are happy to let them. And we have to say, at this time of year, with the flowers, the yellow and the white, it looks absolutely beautiful. So really happy about that. Up here is now becoming a bed mainly of Jerusalem artichokes and strawberries. And as you can see there, the Jerusalem artichoke, we've just chopped and dropped all the stems from the ones that were left. And now you can see all the beautiful lush green artichoke foliage is starting to pop up between the stems and that's actually worked out really well because that's offered coverage from the birds um, so they can't get to the greenery so easily to scratch them all out. Along the front here which has actually started really early this year probably due to how mild it's been overall we've got loads of mashua dotted around and so we just let that trail down the bank the leaves of the mashua are edible and add a really nice peppery taste to salads and then at the other end of the season you get these beautiful white tubers um, which you can roast up or grate into salads and coleslaws and yeah just offer more um, diversity for our garden and for our meals. This end we've got loads of self-seeded um, chard and spinach and weeds and goodness knows what else. It does need a bit of a sort out. That is another job on the very long Freedom Forest list, which we will eventually get to. And then up the top here, I'm always really, really, really excited when it gets to garlic harvest and we are not that far away. Um, every year I have been stepping up the amount of garlic that we grow and as always this year again um, is the most I've planted out of the last three or four years that I've been um, really trying to upscale and in this bed uh, we have two different varieties uh, the bigger ones that you can see are elephant garlic um, and then the smaller um, stems here are a um, French variety like a standard more standard garlic called uh, Mersley white and we got our original seed garlic from the Isle of Wight garlic farm which we absolutely love um, and as you can see this actually used to be a potato bed so there are still loads of volunteer potatoes that have just started popping up all over the place over the last few weeks so probably when I harvest the garlic um, we may well get a little harvest of new potatoes at the same time. And again, around this bed, we've got mashua around the edges. Um, here, you can't see it growing up too much yet, but there's also some yakon plants that come along this edge here and 
more spinach and chard along the back. We just kind of, whenever there's a space, we usually try and put something in it just to fill it out, to maximize the use. Um, and just, yeah, to create more diversity and edibles. And then finally, I think in this area here is our bean bed, um, which at the moment is also turning into a bean and potato bed because this also was another potato bed last year. Um, you may have seen in, our, in a previous video we made that back in the winter we built all these beautiful bean frames ready in preparation because this year we are really going to upscale our growth of beans for drying. And again, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be planting all of these frames. I'm going to be sowing all of the different varieties of beans direct. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing that in the next week or two. And we will hopefully make you another video about what we're sowing um, when I get to that. And then finally, if you are wondering what these... Well, actually not finally. We've got the broad beans in the middle of the A-frames, which they should start producing for us really soon and I actually sowed those direct back in January I think let me just check I've got a label here broad beans yeah the 12th of January I sowed those broad beans and this bed has actually got a really deep mulch on it of wood chip and I just pushed a lot of those broad beans into deep down below the mulch with just a little handful of compost in there and they have quite happily come right up through the deep compost, uh, the deep wood chip mulch. So that's um, a really good thing to know for us. And yeah, finally, what I was just about to say, if you're wondering what these black strips are through the middle, um, we're trying to make every area as diverse as possible and not waste space. So through the middle here is where we've planted more of our super sweet sweet corn. Um, and we're just trialing, we're literally just doing those in single rows, but with two or three seeds planted together so that the corns will come up really close together. And if you'd like to see more about how and why we do that, we've made quite a few other videos about growing corn, so be sure to check those out. Um, and yeah, again, with the um, thought process of diversity, there's actually even more going on in this bed. Um, somewhere let me see I saw something germinated the other day in between some of these bean poles we have got some ochres dotted around yeah I think there's one oh no that's a potato I'm sure I saw an ochre popping its head up around here the other day because I was really surprised but who knows ah here here it is here so yeah so there's um there's some ochre just peeking its head through there. And again, as you can see at the back here, we've got mashua coming all along the back because this area gets quite plagued um, with weeds and brambles. So again, it's just trying to create um, living ground covers and mulch. And I'm also hoping with that in mind to smother out the weeds, to utilize this fence a lot more this year. And I've already started here with, um, these are purple sugar snap peas. Uh, so they add beautiful colour to um, salads, having this really bright purple colour when they're raw. Uh, so yeah, so we've got those in there and I'm hoping to put cucamelons and maybe some more peas and anything else I can think of all along the back here as well. Right guys, so this area here is a new introduction this year. Very exciting. And all along here, this top section, this is our new Nadig potato bed, and this was very degraded land here. It had been used previously, rotivated a lot, had polytunnels on it as well actually, so it had been dried out for extended periods. So we've got our Sarpo potatoes in here, and we've chosen those uh, because they are virus and blight resistant to an extent. So um, we've suffered in the past with those two things, so um, we had good results with these last year, and we did a taste test with all the different varieties as well, so check that out if you're interested in finding out more. They're just emerging now, which is great, and this area was bramble and all sorts before, so we've got a bit of regrowth coming through here, um, which I'm going to be coming round, and I have been coming round with some of these annual weeds, 
and just either lightly, gently surface hoeing them, pulling them out, and just kind of cutting these off at the base. Another problem we've had in here, despite my efforts to install rabbit fencing, which is basically chicken wire buried into the ground around the fence um, in an L shape. One has still got in and he's been digging around, he's pulled a few potatoes up and he's dug up a lot of my corn down there. Um, I actually saw him the other day, he was just standing right in the middle here and I chased him and he ran and he showed me the area where he managed to get in where the fence had actually come up. So I've now got that back down, but we've also got this, basically, um, I'm trying to think of the word, it's humane. a humane <laughs> trap here, humane because we don't really want to be hurting or killing anything if we don't have to. So the idea of this is, we've got some kale in there, he goes in and then he stands on a little trap door at the bottom, and then this door closes. And that means we can carry him out, it's like a pet box type thing and take him on the outside in case he was still in here or he had babies in here or something so fingers crossed though he's out now um, we've planted a little row of onions along here as well these were red onions they're coming up nicely this area has had no watering whatsoever actually so it's having to do its thing very little amount of compost on here as well that's why we're seeing a lot of weeds coming up through but I'm going to be remedying that soon by putting another thicker layer on. And like all of the areas of Freedom Forest, in the long term, I really want this to establish into something beautiful, almost ornamental as well as a very productive area. So with the theme of the tropics that I love, we have some hardy Musa Bajdu bananas planted every three or four metres along this whole strip along here, which in time will create massive 12 foot clumps of bananas. And then um, I've got some other hardy tropicals and uh, cannas and stuff planted along this pathway, which leads to another little area, because these are very important when you're working and gardening. It's nice to come and sit down and have a break, have a little fire. So, I like to incorporate a fireplace into most of the beds we make here. Moving on behind there, you may have seen if you saw our, a new old way to plant corn using Native American techniques, here is our blue Hopi bed. And it's looking quite beautiful actually, I really like this and I do hope it works well for us. Uh, the rabbit has caused a little bit of destruction, digging up some of where my seeds are planted. So I may go around those areas and put some more seed in. It's not too late yet. And along here, going around this kind of um, rest area, we have some Peruvian lilies, which are really beautiful and they make great cut flowers as well. And along the edges of our potato beds, we've also got some of our rainbow chard, which we save our own seed off the plants that do set seed and they're coming up okay along there and oh along the back of this three sisters bed here we have this experimental food forest area or kind of agroforestry in a way in the fact that I've planted these fast growing eucalyptuses and they are only actually going to be a short to medium term thing and they produce quite a good timber actually, very good for firewood, and they grow back at the base when you cut them off, um, coppicing them basically. Along each of those, I'm gonna be planting a passion fruit, the hardy passion fruit actually, and I actually find these really delicious. Um, and in amongst those as well, we have about 15 different uh, plants or trees of figs, um, which are gonna be given protection from frost by the hardy eucalyptuses. And this whole area, this whole bed around here, is also flanked with um, large growing cannas, and then we've got clumps of three to four cordylines and flaxes as well. And the flaxes are my favourite thing for not only uses as ties for plants, but also for weaving baskets and mats. Absolutely brilliant for that. Um, from the Maori in New Zealand actually. Along here this looks like a horrible mess, we really don't like to have the black plastic and tarpaulins but this area here 
we're not ready or we just don't have the time or capacity to uh, cultivate it at the moment. So uh, it's just being kept under there for now. Really massive dense clumps of bramble there and all sorts of perennial weeds like yellow dock. So we may get time next year or another year to start to work on that. Okay, so moving on to our polytunnels now. Um, we're just starting to get a few things planted up in here. Um, the centre rows of both of these polytunnels is where we're planting our tomatoes this year. Um, we've planted about three quarters of the tomatoes down this strip here. And then we've also got a few tomatillos planted over to the right here. Um, and that's actually the first time that we're growing, um, that we've tried growing those before. So that's something new and exciting for us this year. And then in T1, Tunnel 1, um, again, now that uh, we've given this polytunnel a makeover, which you may have seen in our last video, or one of our last videos, uh, exactly the same setup again, three beds, tomatoes down the middle, uh, they'll be tied up, uh, kept up straight with strings. Um, I have had them fleeced because I planted them out quite early, uh, but it's been really warm now, so I've taken that back and some point probably this weekend I'll be planting out aubergines and chilies and hot peppers as well. And we're also going to be having plenty of melons and sweet potatoes. Oh yeah, there, yeah, we? melons, sweet potatoes, we've got a lot. I mean these are going to be packed out with so much stuff but we will tell you all about that in uh, videos to come. So down here is our trusty net house and this net house offers us um, a real abundance of greens which make a huge um, impact in our staple diet throughout the winter and I almost actually forgot to show you in the net house and I can't believe that because yeah there has been so much going on but it is also about time that some of these are going to be coming out and I've got um, quite a few new young plants ready to go in. I've got two types of kale. I think it's a blue curly kale and then scarlet. It's either a scarlet or a Russian kale. Um, so I've got those um, ready to go in. I just need to find the time to get in here and actually do it. But I have been dotting um, a few young plants through here already just as I've got things ready. So this is um, Hungry Gap Kale and this grows super fast, um, hence the name I should imagine for this time of year. Um, and this is a dwarf curly cow. And so yeah, there's a few, there are a few new plants dotted through here already. Um, but our main winners um, for the winter, well for all year really, is our Taunton Dean perennial cow. And we've got three of those in here now. So this one, and the one at the top uh, that you may have seen as we came in, these are the original plants which we bought from Pennard Plants, and they came to us in about, probably in two litre pots, but they grow very, very fast. And then any time that a branch gets heavy and sort of snaps off, I usually use that as an opportunity to take some cuttings. And the, um, the strike rate for the cuttings seems to be really quite high. Um, whether that will be, I've got a load that I just did recently and I know again it's not the best time of year to be doing um, more cuttings but I just figure I'll give it a try and if we get more plants um, from that then, then that's great. I can just dot them through the food forest. Um, you can see there's a couple of plants there that are ready for my previous lot of cuttings which I'll be putting those two into the food forest or uh, maybe into our wild bed or somewhere else at Freedom Forest. Um, but yeah, it's quite hard. The, um, the flowers and the scent from these flowering cows is just beautiful. And so it's quite hard to um, bring myself to take all of these out. The purple sprouting broccoli has nearly finished. Um, we're getting a few small um, broccoli heads from that still now, which are great for salads and stir fries. Um, but again, one day soon, I will have to take the plunge and get it all out and make some space for the young plants, which I have um, ready to go. And if you're wondering what this um, big green barrel of goo is, 
Um, this is some of my nettle fertilizer that I made a few weeks ago by just soaking um, nettles in a barrel for about a week, uh, straining them off, and then I've put that to the side over here so I can just add it to watering cans um, if and when anything looks like it needs a boost. Well guys, we've got other areas that we would love to show you in another video, but we're going to leave it at that for today. And we do hope you've enjoyed having a little look around with us. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our channel because this really helps us to get our content out there and seen and shared by more people that love their gardens and permaculture and agroforestry. Um, so yeah, please share the videos around. Um, also, if there is anything that you'd like to know more about, then let us know in the comments down below and we can try and um, create some videos in the future that might be of interest to you. Yeah, and if there's anything else um, that you haven't heard that we're growing that you think is quite an exciting and cool vegetable that you love to grow, let us know as well. Yeah, we love to learn and hear about new things. So we're always trialing the odd one yeah. or two new plants most years and just seeing how they go. So yeah, so share your thoughts, share yeah. them away. Yeah, we look forward to keeping you updated throughout the season um, as everything starts to fill out and become abundant. But lovely to uh, have you with us and we look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace, Peace and plants. Thank you.